Hi, my name is Katrina Sharp and I'm here at the Clearwater Community Volunteer Center and we, I've gotten a request to do, um, to show some blending and uh, uh, shaping uh, of, of objects for a painting, okay? So I have my trusty sheet here which shows um, how, you know, your sh shadows and your lights and when you're doing a painting that's like one of the biggest things. There are several elements to a painting and shadows and darks and lights are, are one of them, right? So using those and blending those into shades is what gives you shapes. And then also you should always have a color wheel handy because um, well, then you can always just refer to it. No need to have the color wheel memorized. Um, I've always used it as a good tool. Then, I have my canvas ready to go. I have divided it up into thirds, the rule of thirds, and I've marked the corners of those where they intersect because those are your communication lines. So you want to place your objects or whatever you want to do on those lines. And I'll sh we'll get to that later. Okay, so I have two images here. Uh, this is the main image that I want to use, but it wasn't the picture that I took. So I can't copy that exactly because that would be plagiarizing somebody else's work. So, and then, but I like, see how this has very light uh, flowers? I like the more intense colors. So I'm probably going to use some of the colors from here and bring them over here. And in, in this composition, right? And then I'm going to make that fit into here. All right, so that's what we're going to do, and might as well get started. Okay, so here we have the canvas, and I've marked the lines for the rule of thirds, and you know, I've, I've measured it basically this way and this way, and then come up with the intersecting points. Those intersecting points tend to be communication lines and um, us on the western side of the world we tend to read from left and right so your communication is going to come in and swirl around this way and also what how, what these are good for is if you're stuck with composition then that helps you decide where you're going to place the important parts of what you want to highlight in your artwork right so you know if you had a person and you had them facing this way, sitting right here, you're wondering what the heck they're looking at in the distance. Or if they're over here, then there actually is some space here, and you can, um, you can either put something there that they're looking at, or it just depends on what you want to communicate. But having these little lines helps a little bit to decide how you want to compose your artwork. Now I'm pretty much going to stick with this piece, but what's interesting here is that, okay, so you have the sun that's right there, and if I actually took this and placed this over my canvas, that sun, uh, which is not terribly visible, and I'm actually going to darken up that blue because I want a, a deeper blue, um, but it's going to highlight that that's where the light is coming through, right? So that's pretty close to what I want to have as a composition anyway. Okay, so now we're getting ready to start on uh, putting some paint on our canvas. And one of the things, I use these paints. They're called Old Holland, um, but they're pretty high-end. So you can start with um, maybe, um, we've also got some Golden Artist paints or some Windsor Newton. Or you can just have some little craft paint. But if you're getting frustrated with the paint and it's not doing what you want to do, go to your next paint, um, you know, go up the gradient of quality of paints. The better the quality, the better your work. That goes for your brushes too. So if you, um, I have a variety of different brushes, but um, you yeah, this is a, this is a good one. They're called Royal brushes and this is pretty old, it's pretty worn but um, I like it because they hold up really well. And, you know, quite a bit of washing and I, I don't know how old this is. This is at least 10 years old. So um, again, good quality brushes. You're only as good as your tools <laughs> and when you learn how to use them. 
So let's start. Okay, so I want to put this sun in here. So I really mostly want white. Um, so I'm going to put a little, can little white on the canvas. Can't see that yet. Um, and just a tiny little tad of yellow because I really see I have them both on the brush. Just want to get a little bit of color in here, but not too much. I just kind of want it to be a hazy. Well, that's not going to work. My stuff's showing through. Okay, I have to go white underneath. A little bit white, there, heavier paint. Okay, good. Well, I can always go over that again. But there, I just want a little bit. I don't even know if you can see that. I just wanted a little bit of yellow. Now I'm going to put in. See, and this is where you start. Acrylic paints dry really, really fast. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do things as far as blending goes. Um, one, you can have a water bottle and just mist your painting a little bit. That was a little too much. Oops, you don't want it to run. But that keeps your paint a little wetter. And then so when you put in the color. You can help blend that way. Let's get a little more white. Okay. Yeah. Not too happy with that yet. But that's the thing about paint. You play with it until you like it. And that's the really nice thing about acrylic paints. When it's dry and you don't like it, you just paint over it and do it again. So there really aren't any mistakes because you just keep going until you're really happy with it. So now we're going to add more blue. Let me see, clean off my brush. Get rid of that yellow. Paper towels are really, 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 really handy to have. Or a good rag that you can just throw in the washer is good also. Okay, so now I want to get some color going. key with acrylics is that you have to work fairly quickly because they do dry pretty fast and then it's like well it's dry then you can't blend anymore after that right it's a little harsh right in there there So a lot of times what I do to blend is that I will put a little bit of paint from one color on one side of the brush and a little bit of paint from the other side. So that's one way to blend. That's one way to blend your colors. Because I actually want more color around the outside. I like closer to this color rather than this, but I wanted to start and keep that light on the edges. trying to do all this before the paint dries. It's like, <laughs> work fast. 
But you always start with your background first, and then you can work forward in space. So you start distance first, and then you come forward. See how they blend nicely if they're together? There we go. And I'm a big fan of painting all the way around your edges. It's just way more professional to do it that way. So I will add in my edges as I go along. And that way, you don't have to, I mean, you can frame it, but you don't have to. You can hang it right on the wall, just as it is, because it already has color and it looks nice. And there's, that, that makes the edges nice and neat. So. One last edge of blue. The bottom one, the bottom edge, I usually finish off at the very end of the painting because that way I'm not setting it on my easel wet, and this will be dry elsewhere. Okay, so let's see, a little bit more color here. Now another way to blend, so I've shown you a couple of different ways, um, is to use, this Liquitex has a great slow dry blending medium. Now the trick with this stuff though, is uh, that when you are using it, once you've blended something, you have to stop on that part of the canvas and go elsewhere because it'll get sticky and weird. And I'll, sh I'll show you how that works in a minute. Okay, whoops. Okay, now I'm gonna use my medium to s help spread this. I'm a big fan of, of uh, see now this is already dry over here, so now I'm going to have to re-wet that to blend that in. That's just the way uh, acrylic paints are. They're just a little cranky that way. So, let's see. Hide my brush lines. Yeah, that didn't work. Okay. See, a lot of painting is just experimenting until you get the effect that you're looking for. So never worry about, oh my gosh, I messed up, because there is no messing up in painting. You just keep working, and at some point, you're gonna get to the point where you really, really like it. I always find that about, at the point where I'm 75% of the painting, when I'm done with, like 75% of it done, that's when I hate it the most. And then I know I just have to keep pushing through and, I, and then I like it after that. Okay, so. Yeah, see now, because I've See how it's not blended anymore? It's because the slow dry blending has already started to work over there and it's, um, I have to go somewhere else. Work on a different part of the painting. Just let that dry. So 
So we're going to go work in this corner. Okay, let's see. Now at the bottom, I guess I'm going to do a little bit of something like this in the background that's just out of focus. More white. And also, sometimes I find if you're trying to blend, you'd make your you bring your brush a little bit um, like not as heavy see like over here I'm just really brushing hard because I want to get into all of these little crevices of the canvas itself and um, but if I'm trying to blend I kind of loosen up and hold the brush a little bit lighter on the canvas Okay, it doesn't look like a whole lot yet, but at some point it will. Okay, so I've started working on the bottom section, and I'm going to put blending it here. I have to figure out how I want to blend it with the sky. Um, get a little bit more paint. <laughs> Okay. Like we've had to wait for a while because that wasn't quite dry and with when you're using the mediums you have to wait till it's completely dry otherwise when you go back over it it actually takes the paint off which is um, not much fun when you've worked hard to put the paint on. So. Um, if you're trying to do something horizon, like it's going all the way across, it's best if you take your brush all the way across the canvas. So make sure you have enough paint loaded on so that you can put it all the way across. Now, since I'm going to kind of fade it into the blue a little bit, as I go up, and now I'm going to clean my brush really quick. And now I'm going to bring in some blue and a little bit of this green. See, I just put them both on the brush together. So, and then I can blend that. too much. Well, that's the thing about paint. Uh, when in doubt, brush your brush, clean off your brush. didn't really want these vertical lines over here. I was just kind of doing that as a demonstration earlier. So 
So I really want this, the skyline blended across. kind of like how this was blended over here, so let's see if I can save some of that. Because it's a little bit softer over here. Again, I tend to notice that I pick up my brush a little bit. just keep it really, really soft, like I'm barely touching the canvas. And that's another way you can kind of blend it in a little bit. And again, this is the background, and it's not really our focus. So what I want is I just want it blended enough that it doesn't, uh, you know, that the background is there, but it's not necessarily taking over the the painting like it's not going to be the main focus of the painting right Yeah, and really, in the, at the end of the day, if you're having fun, then um, it just doesn't really, you just keep doing what you want to do. Hi, yeah, yeah. Fail. Okay, there we go. It's a little bit better. See, it's a little bit softer. That's what I'm looking for. There. Okay. Let's see. Quite right. But you know, like I said, painting is an experiment and you just keep working it until you're happy with it. with the sky now. I'm trying to get rid of that harsh line. wanting the sun quite as yellow, so I'm going to put 
There we go. Mellow it out just a little bit. Makes it look a little bit more hazy rather than That's about all I'm going to get out of that because now our paint's starting to dry. I kind of like that. I'm going to leave a little bit of that in there. Okay, let's see. Okay, good. I'm going to finish putting in earth at the bottom. See now, so the way that's lighter there, it kind of looks like it's fading into the background, and that's what gives you the distances. And it's interesting that it goes lighter rather than darker, but that's kind of what um, backgrounds do, is that the farthest part is actually a little bit lighter. So there we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's see, just a little bit more in here. Uh oh. See, it's a series of fails. You gotta fix it. Oh, messing it up. Okay, we can do it. Fix it. Now I'm gonna switch brush. This one's like a softer brush. There, it's like, and it's dry, so it's gonna get rid of those brush streaks that were bothering me. There we go. That makes it a little bit softer. Okay, so now that that's dry, we're going to look at putting in our subject matter. So like this, I, I, I kind of like this. I originally looked at it like this, but this looks a little depressing to me, like it's just going down. So this, you know, it comes up, it looks happy, it's optimistic, so that's what I've chosen. And now we're just going to, I have a couple of different brushes here. Uh, one is this long skinny one, and this one's kind of a, but I'm going to start with my branches. And I'm just going to use like a brown color. And I'm just going to put some branches in. I'm going to start here. And this is just to decide where I want them. And what's nice about doing it like this is that if I decide I don't really like them. Since this underneath part is pretty dry, I could just wipe them off. But I'm happy with these, so I'm going to keep going. With trees in particular, it's just kind of fun. You can, you can kind of, I'm sort of following this, but not necessarily. And part of that is because I really do want to just make it my own. This one's bending over this way. Okay. And then 
we're going to have one come from over here. Since I like to take it all the way to the edge, we're going to add that in. Okay, now that those basic lines are in, I'm going to reinforce them a little bit. If you can see the blue through, like here, and you just add a little bit more moisture to the brush, maybe a little bit of water, and that'll fill in those parts of the canvas so it's more solid. But since branches have little nubbies and this and that, it's pretty forgiving what you can do with it, right? Look at see like that just the canvas moved. Oops. I guess what I'm doing is using the side, the edge of this brush. So you could actually also use a little round brush. But I'm pretty happy with the flat, but I'm using the edge of it. Now we're going to do this funky one that curves around.
So the branch is going to always be a little bit thicker. going up towards the tree and a little bit thinner at the bottom. Okay, so now we have our branches basically in. Okay, so now we're going to put in some flowers and I'm going to start with just putting in some little buds. At this point, I'm not really following the painting anymore. I'm just kind of doing my own thing. So, let's see. Right now they just kind of look like blobs of color because that's what they are. a little bit of pink into some of them before the paint dries. So even though I'm using a flat brush, I'm doing a little bit and you just give it a little twist and then you can make it 
a little softer, like some of them I just have straight and some of them. At this point, you know, just plain. Because I don't want them all to look alike anyway. Because everything in nature is individual and different. Even if it's the same, it's a little different. Okay, so you can see where I have a couple of different colors in there. Now I'm going to go back in and make some of it a little bit darker. And that starts to give the flower a little bit of shape. See how you have some of it's dark and some of it's a little lighter and so that's how you get it looking rather than just being flat. It gives it a little bit more dimension. So this one needs something here. That one got a little too blended. I'm gonna make that two flowers. Make it a whole cluster. Why not?
the whole point of spring is reproduction, right? So we gotta make sure we put the reproductive parts in there. Okay. Let's see. Well, there you go. It's a little bit like that one, but I kind of made it my own. Now I'll probably just add a little bit more to the brown branches. You know, like some of these little nubby things. I kind of like those. starts to branches. Okay, there you go. All right, so now that we've almost wrapped up, I've added a couple little more flowers right here. It's really good to step back once you've got some of it on there and take a look at it from a distance because sometimes it looks a lot different and then you can go, oh, well I want to add to this and this or, or I don't want to add to that or Anyway, it gives you a chance to look at it from a distance and see what else you might want to add to it. Or take off of it. I feel like I stepped back and I saw all oh, that little branch needed to be a little bit more substantial. seems to be fading a little bit. Too dark. It's actually good if you don't have it all, like if the middle of the branch is a little bit darker, 
and that kind of gives it the idea that there's um, it's not just flat, but there's some shape to it. Okie dokie. And there you have a little bit of shading, a little bit of blending. Now get to work.